Anyway, which really sets this up. So take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 6 for me. And I'm going to try to use our clicker today. So if I mess up, say change it. Okay, that will remind me that I'm the one that's running the clicker here. So in John chapter 6, whoa, the first one worked anyway. All right. This is the story of the feeding of the 5,000, which one of the stories, the feeding of 5,000, I believe it happened more than once, and, and feeding the 5,000 is a misnomer. It was not 5,000. You're going to see that it was, might have been more like 15,000, so as you see here. Let's take a look at it. It says, when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where should we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him. For he already had in mind what he was going to do. So, so this is a test for Philip. You know, how's, how's his faith? What's, what's he going to do? And Philip answered him. I love his answer. It would, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have even a single bite. I promise you that all the people that are trying to figure out how to feed all the kids that they feed in these different schools and orphanages that I go to, this is probably the way they feel a lot of times. Barely a bite. And that's, this is what he, Philip is saying. It would take half a year's wages to give them even a bite. We can't do this, he's saying. And then it goes on, it says, another of his disciples, did I get it? No, oh, sorry, I skipped this one too many. Okay. Um, Michael, help me out here. I'm going the wrong way somehow. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Okay. Um, another of his disciples, because this is really key to what we're talking about here today. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a boy. I love the fact that he's emphasizing this. If, if they use the term a boy, it is a young guy. A little guy. Here's a boy. I can just see mama packing his lunch for him as he goes off, with five barley loaves and two small fish. I love the fact that it says two small fish. Now, if you, I'm guessing, see a Galilee, probably tilapia, and tilapia can get, you know, big, or tilapia can be, you know, like little perch. So he's got two small fish and five loaves of barley. Uh, but then he says, Here's this little guy, but how far will they go among so many? Now, here's the thing I want us to think about this morning. What if, when this little boy was first asked, what if this little boy had said, not a chance. This is my lunch. They should have thought about bringing their own lunch. Look at some of these people. Some of these people are certainly older and more capable, and they, shouldn't have had their, they should have had their act together. They should have brought their own lunch if they were going to be hungry. I'm hanging on to my stuff. I'm not giving anything. And he just held back. What do you think would have happened that day? Or what if, and isn't this the answer we hear a lot of times, or response we hear a lot of times in America? I don't have enough. What, what difference is what I'm going to do going to make in helping these people. We say that in regard to, in regard to Haiti. We, we look a lot of times to Haiti. I'm on the board of a group called Mission to Haiti. And I hear it all the time. They don't care for themselves. You know, they, and, and, they're, and it, that is absolutely true. You know, you give them something and their hand goes out a second time. Okay. You've never lived in their shoes. You've never lived in their situation. I'm so glad that didn't happen here. When you're develop in a developing country or a third world country, there's a mindset that kicks in. And yes, we can waste money. And yes, we can waste energy. But I am so grateful for people that will just step it up and will say, look, I don't have a lot, but here's, I'm going to give what I've got. I remember when I, first, when I first went to Uganda. I mean, people would say to me, what's your game plan? <laughs> when I took the presidency of Ajax, that's the game plan. What do you mean that's the game plan? I'm going to Uganda. What are you going to do? Don't know. I'll figure it out when I get there. 
And I mean, that was back in 2011. And literally, God filled in the blank, as you're going to see here in a minute. And I'm just grateful that this little boy said, I don't know if these will help. But here, I've got these five loaves and these two fish. And so, let's keep looking about how the story goes on. Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place. It's like Jesus said, oh, grassy area, let's have a picnic. And, uh, and they sat down, about 5,000 men were there. Now, if there's 5,000 men, what else do you suppose would be there? Women. And if there's men and women together, what else do you suppose there will be? Children. So it's far more than 5,000. Please understand that. So there's this crowd. So how large was it? Don't have any idea, but it was big. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much, as much as they wanted. There was no limitation to what they could take. They, you can just see the old guys rolling back and going, I am so full I couldn't eat another bite. But notice, they filled up with the bread, and then he says, and he did the same with the fish. So this is just, I love it when you see a miracle like this, and there's no way to explain this away. I see people all the time, you know, want to take a miracle, and they want to put the science behind it. And they want to examine, how could that have happened? How, there's only one way that, let's say 10,000 people could have been fed on this day with five loaves and two fish. It could only happen because Jesus was who he said he was, God in human form, and God can do whatever God wants to do. The minute we try to put God in a box, God says, I have a surprise for you. Watch what I can do. And that's what happened here. There's no other explanation for this other than Jesus. Please rest in that. I love it when people scoff at that. With my science background, I am one of those scoffers, you know. And I'd go, come on, you can't possibly believe that Jesus could feed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. And now I can say, yeah, I have to believe it. Because he was the son of God and he proved it over and over and over and over again. When they had had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. There's a lot of theology behind these, the leftover 12 loaves. You know, 12 tribes of Israel, 12 disciples, Jesus to give them symbol. You know what I think? I'm going to give you a much more practical explanation for it. There was dinner left over for the disciples. They had food. That's just a lot easier to deal with than all the other theology of it, isn't it? But there was nothing wasted. So the disciples got to eat as well. So I just... Anyway, that's the story that I want us to see for this morning. Then I'm going to take us on a little tour of this trip to Uganda. So you're going to watch three videos... Um, the first one is you're going to see a lady's house. Please understand that the place where this lady lives is the house in front of the brick house, this little mud hut. The second video clip is going to be showing a demonstration farm that, we're, that you have helped finance and other people in this community have helped finance. And then we're going to see... Um, the Cal Project and what's going on with the Cal Project and sort of give you an update on that. So these, these three clips, I'm going to just fire off one after the other. Hopefully, they're going to work. Here we go. Um, you, know, you know, you've been to Uganda many times. times. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you've seen many people around, around here. here. And most of the people here are poor. But there's too, too many, many other people who are more poor than others. Yeah. Right, right. So, so we can't tell everybody, but we choose the poor. The poor were poor. poor. Right. right. So, so as, as you can, can see here, this, this house, house here. here. This is yes. the, the mud, 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 the mud,
ça déshydraté, donc je vous la déhydraté, ok So, this is a mother, and uh, this is a mother, where they just stay. So, uh, how do you come up with this today? This is like a yeah. 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 This, this is habitat in humanity. <laughs> what do you want to say, Stuart? We get it. Hey, hello, what is easy? I'm not going to move on. Move on, move on. Move on, move on. Move on, So, you know, that's how you can make the difference in life. So, you can make the bill. To build a house like this. Start to finish. How much money does it cost to build a house? Five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars to build the house. Wow. The project is five thousand dollars. And these bricks you're making locally. Yes. So you buy bricks. You're making the bricks. You buy the bricks. You buy cement. You buy sand. You buy everything. And then you cut a concrete block. Yes. So you buy the bricks. You buy the cement. You buy sand. You buy everything. And then you cut a concrete block to build it. And the metal roof and the metal roof. So this is now like by drawing the window and finishing it. So that they can move from this one to the other. We are looking forward to that day when it happens. How long is it going to take? To finish? Yeah. Like now it's like fruit. It will be done. Especially with that. Yeah, if you have got the money to to do it. Did you just catch, you just catch how, how he got, got that block up, up to the other guy? guy? He, he just tossed, tossed him with bricks up. up. He, he caught, caught it and split the place. place. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 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 <laughs> so that's some of your dollars at work right there. I mean, can you imagine building something like that in the Keys for $5,000? <laughs> it's just incredible. That's why I said it's Habitat for Humanity and Sturridge. And several of us in here are on the board of directors for Habitat for Humanity in the Upper Keys. And so they're just like, oh, my goodness. So somebody asked, why does that little child not have any clothes? I go, because he doesn't have any. You know, he's probably washing his clothes he has, and that's, you know, he doesn't need them. So let's watch the second one. Thank you so much. This is the demonstration. Uh, we are looking for what we need is more land. What we need is machinery, like a tractor that is required for us to plow. You said they need more land and more equipment for production. And increase the production so that we may be able to feed ourselves, to sustain ourselves. That's our aim. We need to cover a level. They have where built that we are self sustained so where we can have our own food yeah. to feed the kids, you know, it's 2,544 meals every day, that's a big number. We can repeat that again, 2,544 meals, 2,544 meals every day, that's a very big number. Yes. And, and, and your, your, how, how many children... Of your 800, 800 and some odd children, children have been, been sponsored. sponsored. About, about 100. About 100. Yes. And it's $40, 40 per, per child? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's what we're talking about. So $40 a child, sponsors a child. And I've, people have asked me about that. So when you put $40 in, as Americans, we, want to, we picture a child and our $40 going to, for that child. For them, that's forty dollars going to feed a kid, you know, of the eight hundred. He's actually got about a thousand kids. So I mean, it is, it is feeding the masses, and that's that's the way you have to view that. Our American view is so different than the Ugandan view. And if you ever go and they call you Papa, understand? Yes, it's an endearing term, but it also means we want you to be my benefactor. And so you have to be very aware of that when you when you go there and you're dealing with them. Now the next one is going to be showing the, the cow farm. It's a little bit longer, but it, you'll. You'll appreciate this part because we've invested so much in in the cows. Yeah, tell us about the tell us about the cows. This is cows. First of all, we had one cow, right? For winners, and we have got two cows from that cow. 
Those are dogs, so, not me.
forage, and they were providing milk for all 600 of their children there at the, at the school. Yeah. And then the other ones we were involved in, uh, they were giving us babies, and so they were giving each baby half a liter. So they were, they were providing about 102 babies or more a day with milk, depending on whether they get 17 babies or not. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, so yes, yes, I appreciate you. Friends, thank, thank you so much for uh, supporting the COW project. project. It's doing, doing the work. work. Yeah. It's more trying. And in many cases, I've been fed. And in many cases, I've been continuing to continue. continue. So, so, we're looking forward to having more cows. I'll give, give, give them, them out. out. What, 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 what you see here? Yeah. What would you what would guess, you guess uh, Timothy, our total, total cow, 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 of all the cows you've given away over the years? About 1,200. About 120, and that's because of birds. We lost some during COVID, but many of the cows are having calves, as we're seeing, which is wonderful. All right, good, good. That's an urge. The cow project, like it provides for that. Yes, yes. So, so this project is for the kids. kids. Sometimes they mix it to, to, to with college. college. Mm -hmm. That's where everybody, everybody gets, gets a bit of it. Yes, yes. That's, that's the, the uh, 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 idea behind this. Sure, sure. It's it's for the for the yes, yes. We are happy. We are doing well. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank the Rotary Club of the kids. Thank you, Thank you for your, your support, support in all these years, years to the cow project. project. And I also, also want to thank Island and Intercharge for standing strong, strong with us. And, and all, all, all of you people, people who have individually contributed towards the, the cow project. project. All of all this is so good. good. We appreciate you people. people. All, all, all the mics, all the mic forester. Yeah, yeah mic for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so the mayor. mayor. Yeah, the mayor. The mayor. Well, thank, well, thank you, Tim, for having a vision for, for thank making this all happen. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you for appreciate it. it. So that's the, uh, just the demonstration farm where there's acres of tomatoes growing. They've got cassava, which is a, a root plant that they eat, and like a big potato, and then um, have potato plants, uh, a, lot of, a lot of fruits, passion fruit, big vines of passion fruit, which are used for the juice for the kids to drink. So this, this is a pretty amazing project that he's got going, and he's calling it a demonstration farm because he wants to show um, others how to do it properly. And to be, as you heard the word, I love the word he said, self-sustaining. And uh, that's, a, that's a key word for me when I'm looking at helping these guys, is what are you doing to move forward and to make things better. He was training them how to get the vet to care for the animals because we lost some because of like he said, because of, I said, because of COVID during that time, they just couldn't take care of them. And so I'm grateful that the ministry is doing as well. I'm going to fly through some slides for you. Some of them I'll stop on. I'll make comments, but we're going to run out of time. So I don't want to, I don't want to hold you up because we want to share the Lord's Supper as well this, when we finish. <clears throat> so here we start. You got into 2023. Matt, there's no easy way there. You guys that fly to Kenya know that there's no easy direct flight hardly. You just, this was... Uh, Miami to Washington, Washington to Brussels, Brussels to Kilgali, and you think you're almost there, and you sit on a plane for about an hour, and then you finally make it across to Uganda, to Entebbe, where you get off the plane in the middle of the night. As I flew, we flew in, I looked, and I just, I can't believe how big the Sahara Desert is, and then there, right on the other side of the Sub-Sahara uh, Desert, and you guys are ministering out on the, kind of the edge of the desert area, aren't you, when you're there in Kenya, it's but it's just incredibly desolate. Um, here's Matt. Uh, we, the first, we, we slept in the morning of Saturday morning. We got up and we went to uh, Lake Victoria where we spread some of Mike's ashes, Mike Forster, because he was here at this statue one day and said, you know what, I could see that happening one day. And I thought, okay, file that away. Don't think I'll ever need it, but I'll just you remember that. And so Matt's looking at the the, the bust of Gandhi there, and of course, Gandhi didn't ever go to Lake Victoria, but he, he uh, I think they buried his ashes or heart or something, you know, in the, in the lake. So, anyway, there we are out on Lake Victoria, <clears throat> source of the Nile. It kind of bubbles up right here. Um, 
This, look quickly, that's the only wildlife you see in Uganda. You know, people expect to see lions, tigers, and bears. No, my, no, it, that's none of that. They're just not there, unless you go over and see the mountain gorillas, which is a long way from us. But it's a little monkey in a tree, and that's it. That was, that was all the wildlife. <clears throat> this is the view out the window from the church, looking down over uh, Katusi, which is a very pristine-looking place, and then you walk down in that village, and you recognize the level of poverty that's there. Where we stay is, is, looks a whole lot better than you would expect us to be staying in. I wonder if we're going to stay in mud huts with uh, dirt floors and snakes crawling on us. No, this is, this is where we stay. Pretty comfortable. That's where we have breakfast in the morning, so it's not an uncomfortable thing. It's Timothy. I think it's probably the one and only time Timothy was waiting for us to come in. Usually we waited for hours for Timothy to come. But <laughs> I got to preach three times on Sunday, um, and uh, this was a, a revival service they were doing, and it was, it was a pretty packed church. Um, pretty exciting. It was Father's Day. And all the fathers come up, and I happen to look. I'm a biology guy, so this doesn't bother me a lot usually, but I had guys come up and, uh, on the stage, and uh, this guy standing next to me, I looked down at his foot, and I'm just, I literally was going, boop, boop, you know, doing one of those kind of deals, because it's, uh, I, but I put this picture here, because that's, that is a fairly common thing that you see in Uganda. These people are just, they just don't have any care. Um, so the children greet us with these branches. When you come, they're cheering and carrying on. They know you're going to give them something. And, and here in this particular spot, uh, we gave away two cows. This is how we started the day. And uh, Matt got to give away the cow. This was on Monday. And then uh, <clears throat> this is another one that we got to give away at the next stop. Uh, and then we, we traveled on over almost to Kenya to uh, a, little, a, a large school, actually, uh, that was over on the uh, eastern side of Uganda. That is the biggest mango tree I've ever seen in my life. Those are all secondary school students. You can see how big these, these schools and orphanages are. Uh, there's the elementary side of it under another mango tree. That's actually across the campus. Uh, this is where they stay. This is a classroom during the day, and at night they turn it into a dormitory because they don't have the dorms built yet. So this is where the children are sleeping. Probably the teachers also uh, are staying there. They have signs like this up all over the place just as a reminder of what we've all gone through. And this guy has done a great job of putting these cautionary signs up all over his campus. He's an amazing guy. Um, his name is Simon. This okay, Mike. Mike. On behalf of the Shang School, can you handle our, our how, how to, to die school? Thank you so much. Amen. 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 I had to show you that in Jesus' name, and he swats a cow on the rear end. <laughs> and then as we were getting ready to leave, we see this kid walking up with this turkey, a live turkey, and we're going, oh, what's going to happen with this? Timothy takes that live turkey, throws it in the back of the truck of the car with us. So we ride back with a turkey. It was... I mean, this is like driving from Miami to Orlando about, you know, so we've got this live turkey. Once in a while, he would make a little gobble and do a little poop in the back, and we were kind of like, woo you know, but you got used to it after a few hours, and this, this is just Ugandan. I mean, it's, this is just Ugandan, you know, you just get used to it. And this is the next little stop we made to a much poorer school. When the kids don't have school uniforms, you know it's a, it's a very poor school. And, uh, but man, they had a, I just had to show you this guy, just cool little kid. Um, this lady was a sharp older lady, really has her stuff together. So we were able to give two cows to this orphanage. This is the first one that Matt was giving away. This one, you can't hear what I'm saying, but I'm basically thanking Rotary Club from all over South Florida, uh, Mike Forrester families and people and friends that gave to the cow ministry and Island Community Church for giving Anyway, that just goes.
goes on and on and on and on. So remember a few years ago, we put Rick Strong Playground in and we, we were setting it up and this was the building that, remember Mike climbed up in that scaffolding and was kneeling up there and we took a picture of it and uh, I want you to see the building now. So that's that same building. So that's, that's three, basically that was in 2019, it looked like that and so from 2019 to now, that's what's happened to that building. So Timothy's doing an amazing job there. I love what he says there. Winter's Home, Uganda, New Life Building, making the, the uh, invisible God visible. So, and then this is the school classroom building we put in years ago called Wilsey House. And then if you look at this, you can't hardly see that, but that's God's plan of salvation written on the wall. And it says Union of Christian Colleges and Schools, Uganda, uh, sponsored by. So I thought, okay, good. I'm glad we're getting the gospel out to, to people. And every time you go into his school, you see this right on the wall. And that's the girls' dormitory that he just finished. Uh, you should have seen the one they had before. It was terrible. This is inside. Those little trunks is the only thing the kids have. That's their belongings. This is next, going to be the next president of Uganda, probably. And then uh, Matt was tasked with the responsibility of upgrading the Rick Strong playground because it got destroyed by, by kids. And so he spent a huge amount of time running from there over to the building and back and teaching and then running back and, and, and doing what he does here in the United States in terms of supervising and contracting and digging holes and doing everything else. And they loved, they loved Matt. Uh, especially his Lion of Judah tattoo, when they saw that Lion of Judah tattoo. Everything was cool. Matt was very typical first year traveler to Uganda with me. Um, you know, the kids are like, he's like, oh, I don't know about all these little kids hanging on me. And then, uh, but you get used to it. And uh, he was okay until the kid tried to lick the tattoo. And, and that about freaked him out. And fortunately, the child is still alive. It was okay. But, but, uh, so it's like, yeah, that's, yeah, I don't even need to say anything. Um, here he is doing what he does. And Timothy, of course, supervised everything. This is where we are speaking at the Rotary Club leadership uh, that night. And Matt is, is basically the Rotary guy speaking up. We're, getting, we're trying to work on international grants with this club. And uh, so that if we do, that will be a huge amount. This is Bernard Bogori's wife. We mentioned Bernard died of covid First man that I knew that passed away just before Mike did. He was the vice president of our association. Uh, we were able to give her uh, a million shillings. I know that sounds like a huge amount. It's about $300. But we were able to take her a gift and just spend time with her and pray with her. And that's her son and daughter there as well. This is another little school that we went to. These were very regimented uh, and interesting. You see how they paint the signs on all the buildings? Those, they use their building as teaching tools. And this is the cow that we gave away there. I'm trying to move quickly. They all love to have their picture taken. Then we went to this school, which is incredible school. Most energetic, alive, vibrant school because a young, vibrant school administrator that just, just rocked it. I mean, he, and you're going to see what he does with these, with these cows here in a minute. They had these signs up all over. I thought, this guy just cut right to the chase. Now, how appropriate with this little child standing out there. It says, believe Jesus today for eternal life and escape hell. I mean, that's kind of the bottom line. You know, he didn't mince his words. It's, you, know, you want to go to heaven or you want to go to hell? You got a choice. Believe Jesus or go to hell. You know, imagine getting away with that in a school here in America. <laughs> uh, and then I thought this one was incredible. These are all kids that aren't in the school. And this is one of the sad things you see in Uganda. These families can't pay the school fees, etc. And so they're outside the gate. And I thought, oh man, is that an appropriate thing to show? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I'd love to see all those kids in the school. This school probably has, I would say close to it, you know, I guess he had, what, 600, I guess it was, 599, I think he said. Yo, thank you. No, watch this now. So this we is, gave this, this school, school one pound. pound. Several, Several years, years ago. ago, it was 2000, 2000. So, so four calves, calves yes, yes. have been born, born to, these, to, these, to this to this cow. So, so we're grateful, grateful for, the for the school, school and the way they've they cared, cared for, for the cow. cow. So we gave one cow in 2018 or 19, 
and had four calves, and now they are modeling how to care for it when you don't have much of a facility. Um, Here's a pretty good model for how to, how to, how to do this, this for other schools. schools. Take, take a whole lot. Food, food source. source. Cows, Cows are very healthy. healthy. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Yes, yes very, very much, much so. so. As, As Matt, Matt said, said, great, great stewardship. stewardship. Yeah. <laughs> how many, how many liters, liters are your cow producing? How many, how many liters, liters of milk? Liters of uh, seven. In the evening, and then, and then in the morning, morning 10, 10, 10, 10. So about 17 total. total. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. And are and you cutting, cutting that three, three to one? one? Three, three to one. one. Or, or how, how, do you, how do you how do you give, give the milk, milk to, the to the children? To the children. The, 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 we mix it with porridge because this if we do only milk, it would not be enough. So we mix it with the porridge and then soften the children. How many children are fed by 17 liters a day? Day. Oh, 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 never intended to be involved in doing this. I mean, that was, the cow thing was our side project and what I, I go to Uganda for. This is the grain they buy from a brewery in Jinja, and uh, this is the residue of the grain, and they bring that in. This, this truckload will last a month. Matt actually paid for this truckload for them, so they shovel that, and that becomes part of their food for their, their thing. Now, here we are dodging Boda Boda and traffic. We, traffic was so bad in Makuno, I was supposed to be the keynote speaker at, at the Rotary Club, and we couldn't get there, so we had to abandon our car and make our way through the streets for I don't know how far it was, three quarters of a mile, something like that. We finally got there, and I'd left all my stuff in the car, so I had to just wing it when we got there. But uh, here we are speaking. You can tell I'm having a real blast. Uh, now we are exchanging our banners with Rotary. That guy was a was he major in the military, and uh, you could tell he was a major. Uh, here I am doing what I go to Uganda to do, and that is to teach teachers how to be better teachers. Uh, because they hire these people with no training, they take them out in the jungle, they put them in front of 100 kids or, or less, and, or maybe more, I don't know, I don't know what you're going to do. And give them a state curriculum, and that's what they're supposed to do as a teacher. And uh, so I go in and do Education 101, 201, 301 in about a two-day period of time, and, uh, and teach all day. And, and uh, just try to give them as much as I can and pour into their lives. We also gave them these shirts that uh, Marina, uh, that had gone out of business up the street, had given us, and so they thought those were super fishing shirts. They loved them, and uh, along as a bunch of equipment as well. You can see all of them in their shirts. And then we gave them soccer balls, and these are certificates. These are all new people joining the association. Timothy decided to give me a grade, so he sent me that grade at the end. Uh, thanks, Timothy. Now, this is a fishing village that we go into. This is the poorest of the poor. Government-owned land. They're squatting on the land. Um, they don't care. I, you know, you talk about the feeding of the 5,000 situation, and they're, they're like, you know, we don't know any other life. We're happy here. It's frustrating as all get out because you go in and you see these young guys, uh, and they're drinking beer and talking to Matt and I about wanting to do dope and we're and they, I mean you know they didn't even know what they're asking about but it's just it's, it's frustrating you know you just want to go get a job and of course there are no jobs and uh, it, it really can get to you if you and you when you're dealing with them but but this village is the poorest of the poor we had a almost what I think was like a Gadarian demoniac experience with this guy that followed us around ranting and raving and carrying on and I was I literally was about to do the in the name of Jesus come out of him uh, deal, and Timothy and the other guy barked at him, and he settled down and went off. But it was, it was a little weird. I watched Matt get in combat mode during those moments when the guy was around, and it was it was very different. Um, <clears throat> that's that's one of the homes, another of them. What is all that stuff on the roof? It's stuff to hold the roof down. <laughs> 
That's the pharmacy. And they have a you know, pine forest that's been planted across the way, and there's their fishing vessels. Another village where they get water, they actually charge a tax now to, get, to use this water, but at least it's, it's good, clean drinking water for these people, and they fill up these yellow uh, cans. This is the church in the village. Just, just looking out from that village out. This is actually the second village we were in, Main Street. This is an old man's home. This is on the way to the girl's home that we, that we were able to build. And uh, this, there's a, a guy that lives in this, if you can imagine that. Looks like our utility shed in the backyard, right? This is inside that lady's home. Gary, dim those lights down so we can see that and see what that's like a little bit. Yeah. Can you imagine calling that home? And then this is the, the farm. These are just the vines, passion fruit that I was telling you about. The cow farm. We gave out ice cream at this baby's home. Set up playground equipment, more playground equipment there that I didn't know we were buying, but we bought, which was fine. Uh, that's Tony and Tony digging holes. Whoop! I want you to see this. Uh, this, this is, is Paul. Paul. In the members of, of Mike, Mike Forster. Mike, Mike loves in memory of Mike Forster. The, the babies, babies here, here at the baby's home. Yes. So, so we, we want to dedicate this to Mike Escona. Remember what his, his love, love, his, his commitment, commitment to the babies, babies here, here was too much. much. So, so this will be like an right. active place. place. Mike, you know, was connected with Mike. Mike, 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 so this will be there. So we'll call, we'll call it some Mango Mike, Mike Dining Hall. Yes. yes. And we, we will serve chicken on a stick. Yes. Which, Which he loves, loves. we could never, never get him to bring it in the restaurant. restaurant. Yeah. So, so anyway, we're talking about the chicken on the stick uh, in Uganda. So this is the dining hall they're putting in in honor of, of Mike, basically as a remembrance for, for Mike because he loved this, this baby yeah. hall. And uh, Let me know how to get a pie. To see kind of it's, yeah. it's a massive yeah. 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 All right, so that's enough of that. Here we then we spoke uh, to these young. These are young Christian leaders. A bunch of them are from Timothy's family, and but. He's trying to invest in the lives of, of young Christian leaders there. And so we had a dinner uh, that night. So you can tell we were, we were on the move all the time. I, I just, I, this is church service. So if we think black gospel was invented in America, we are sorely wrong. All right. This is church Ugandan style. You get the idea, and uh, that was the end of the trip. It was a it was a phenomenal trip, and Matt was awesome to have along. And uh, several people here have been on this trip with me, and and uh, so I'm just grateful for what God has done. And I thought, well, we'll just use this weekend to give you a good summary of it. I'm going to lead you some prayer. Yeah, the reason I go um, is because these people need Jesus. The door is wide open still for the gospel there. And I love the opportunities I got to preach uh, again two more times in the service. I was supposed to preach three times, but we had to go catch a flight. So I just want people to understand that heaven and hell hang in the balance, whether you're in Uganda or whether you're in America. Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for your sin. And all we need is to accept that for forgiveness. And we have the promise of eternal life. So what that little sign said, accept Jesus for heaven to avoid hell. That's the invitation in Uganda. That's the invitation in America. So I trust everybody understands that. If you don't, man, I would love to talk to you. Trevor would love to talk to you. You know, let's, let's not put it off another 2.5 seconds. Make sure that heaven is nailed down and that you are a child of the king. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father, for today. I thank you for the service. Thank you for loving us like you do. Thank you for the honor and the privilege to serve you, to go into Uganda and to the other countries that we, we travel into. I, I just thank you that 
Uganda happens to be the one that's been the most productive and successful. Um, I pray that you'll bless this church. Uh, thank you for their generosity and thank you for the, those that have given over the years to various projects. We pray your blessing now over each person that's here. And, and Father, I pray that if there's even a single one that has not accepted you, that right now on the sides of their heart, they'll just go, Lord, I love you, I need you, I don't understand everything there is to even understand about you. But I do believe that Jesus died for me. And I want to accept that this morning. And Father, I pray that for those of us that know you, that we may never be stingy, that we may never hold back when we, we just, that we'll take whatever we have that we can give and say, Lord, use it, use it. And so, Father, I pray that you'll bless each person in that way. And Father, I ask now that as we uh, pause for this time of offering, that you'll bless this time as well. And then as we go into the Lord's Supper, I pray that we'll honor you with all that we do during those moments. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, let's receive the offering. Thank you.